Happy Wednesday, Keith Tebow from FRC Media. It is time for our weekly conversation with the mayor of Fall River, Mayor Paul Coogan. Mayor, how are you today? Doing fine. How about you, Keith? I'm doing well. I said weekly conversation. Unfortunately, we had to postpone last week's conversation. So we'll try to get two weeks into one uh, this week in speaking with you. Uh, last week, a uh, week ago Monday, the uh, school committee and Superintendent Maria Ponce was talking about uh, in general, the MCAS uh, numbers, the the test scores that came out uh, that, um, you know, the, the district is still looking at. Um, the numbers obviously dropped. Uh, there were a lot of reasons to that. COVID, of course, and the lack of in-person learning. Um, what do you take away from what you've been able to see in terms of the MCAS numbers? And how can the city try to rebound from this? Well, the city can try to rebound by just... Uh you know, getting kids back in the classrooms and uh, and strengthening the curriculum and working hard to get uh, competent, caring teachers in front of the kids, just like we have in almost 99% of the classrooms. This is uh, this was not unexpected. I, I had a conversation with the Lieutenant Governor long before these scores came out and long before they even gave the test. And I asked her about a pause for a year here to buy us some time to get these kids back in front of teachers. I, I am, and I try my best, but I'm from an old school type of learning. I don't understand how a kid sitting in front of a monitor is going to get the same level of education that, um, that is being given out in the classroom. It just doesn't make sense to me. I, I was extremely nervous about the scores, although in Fall River, there were a few bright, um, bright spots in amongst all the scores that I'm very pleased with, but, uh, overall, statewide i was reading an article yesterday i think it was in the globe about mcas tests and the state took a tremendous dip uh and i i guess any state that went uh that was under the uh mcas rules and regulations probably would have took the same dip it's just no way to tell me that a, a monitor is going to replace a, a caring teacher uh, with good instructional skills and and materials which a lot of our teachers have now or i should say mostly all it's just not the same. It's not the same level of instruction. It's not the same learning standards. It's just different. And I, I really feel bad for these kids. I think it's going to take them years and years to make this up. Yeah. Um, another um, part of this that was brought up was the fact that the absentee rate uh, among students in the four of the public schools was also at a high right. uh, last year. I believe nearly 50 percent, 48 percent were chronically uh, absent throughout the year. And I believe that's 10% of, of missing 10% of, of, of all days. Again, I guess if students aren't in school, they can't learn. Uh, I know this has always been a balancing act here in Fall River in terms of, you know, let it be known to parents the importance of getting their their kids to school. Is there anything that, that the school department can do differently that they haven't already done in terms of, you know, continue to drive that message home? Right. I, I, I really believe this is a, uh, a person by person battle. You just... Um, what, again, it's the same kind of mindset that, that overwhelmed COVID. Um, all of a sudden, I, I'm near Keith. Keith's positive for COVID. Oh, stay home five days. Uh, those numbers bubbled up, you know, a number of factors. Lack of interest um, on the part of uh, our parents and in, in struggling with a kid that's, you know, telling them there's COVID in the school or there's a battle going on when we needed them in, in the building. It's just uh, it's a tsunami of perfect proportion, whether it's scores, attendance, I mean, you know, getting these schools back to where they belong is going to be, as I said, it's going to take more than a year. People have to understand that. And anything a parent can do to help us with their, with their child's attendance, we want them to pitch in. You know, we have them. I always used to tell parents when I worked in the schools, we have them six, seven hours a day. You have them 17, 18 hours a day. We have, um, we, we need you as partners in their learning, whether it's whether it's home assignments, whether it's getting to school, whether it's school involvement. Um, you know, I, I just know that, that that's the strength we have is when we have parents that are engaged and uh, concerned about their child's education. It makes a world of difference, not only in Fall River, but in Tulsa, Oklahoma or uh, Boisman, Montana. If people will pitch in and help with their kids' education, it's very important. And obviously my focus is on Fall River and those numbers are distressing, but we we own them. We got to move on. We got to do better. Yeah.
Yeah, absolutely. I want to get into another aspect. I'd like to ask you some questions about city projects that are happening. Uh, we've talked about the city pier, um, and we'll talk about that a little more next week because I know there's going to be a dedication ceremony a week from Saturday to officially dedicate the pier. We'll talk about that next week. But uh, one of the projects that actually goes along with the new BMC Durfee High School was the, uh, the old building was uh, demolished and taken down. But the old Nagel Auditorium, uh, obviously the new auditorium is named after the former superintendent as well. But the old Nagel Auditorium is looked to be uh, uh, set up as a performance, uh, performing arts center that the community can use. Do you have any updates on what the progress of that is? I know uh, the Mass Cultural <coughs> Council was here last week, and I believe you had the opportunity to show them that space. Right. Uh, they, obviously, they were very impressed with the space. I mean, the old Nagel Auditorium, it, it could be a show place for the city of Fall River. We need a roof. Uh, we need some upgrades across the board in there, whether it's whether it's bathrooms, lighting, the doors, you know, that, that are just sprung from years and years of uh, neglect. They uh, they were very impressed with the facility. We were talking about a significant difference in money, though. They were talking about a few hundred thousand dollars. When I'm talking millions, we uh, toured the building with a local bank that might want to partner with us on this project. Um, we're looking to go down the hall to add some um, vocational classes that might help us with this project. Um, we have a lot of irons in the fire, and I'm hoping they all come together like a lot of the projects do in Fall River. We just need to stay on it. I think I think if you've ever been up there on a weekend, Keith, when there's a dance recital or when there's a concert, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice venue. It's got some great amenities, and uh, I'm just not at the point where I want to just let that go yet. We got to get something in there. Now, now, who is uh, who operates it? Is it the school department or is the the city side that the city, actually runs the, um, the? The left side of the building is the parent center where the uh, new registrants come to enroll in our schools, and the right side of it is the auditorium and the uh, music rooms. Um, we uh, we have control over that part of it. It's a city project, but obviously, if we did a roof or we did something that would upgrade the whole building, we can work with the schools on that. It is, it's no longer, um, the reason they told us that we are eligible for grants now is because it's not attached to a school per se. When we took the uh, walkway down and we disconnected it from the other buildings, it's a standalone right. building. So it's eligible for some, uh, some grants now, which is what we're looking for. Any thoughts of potentially maybe even using some, some ARPA money for this? Is that a possibility? Could be, uh, depending on how this plays out. I'm trying to keep, uh, I try to keep ARPA money, you know, in the reserves and, and look for other sources first, but um, that's not being closed out yet. Right. All right, I want to shift gear. We've talked a lot about the uh, building of the new uh, city website, and we've talked about the logo contest. I believe there are over 200 entries of potential logos to represent the city of Fall River. And I guess there may be some movement in terms of uh, some finalists and, and getting the, the uh, city residents involved. What can you give us an update on that? Yeah, they had, um, they had the, uh, the uh, six finalists in that are going to be presented to the uh, citizens. They can vote. Um, I had no say. On the sixth final, I deferred to the panel, which in, uh, they did a great, great job filtering through because there was probably a hundred good ones, um, and they narrowed it down to six. Um, there's going to be an opportunity to vote. We'll have the websites up. We'll have the Facebook polling spots up, and people are going to be the ones that make the call on the webs on um, the new logo design. I think the ones I've seen are clean and neat, and they uh, they professionalized. The look of the city and that's all i was looking for but i'm going to have the same amount of votes as uh as <laughs> someone that lives on whipple street or barnaby i'm i have one vote and that's going to be my vote also yeah all right sounds good we'll hear more about that as we get uh get uh, closer to that announcement i believe in the next week or so um you know but between now and the next time we speak next wednesday halloween will have uh, happened as boy there's really been a lot of great community events for Halloween um, that have already taken place and will take place over the weekend and on Monday. I know there's one uh, downtown where there's sort of like a stroll that will lead to um, a CD Rex uh, party a little bit later on. So a lot of great opportunity for community events for Halloween. It, it's right. it's great for the city to see. Well, I, I when I was at Friday night, I was up at Durfee for the Trunk or Treat um, event. I, I sponsored a uh, 
the Green Jar food truck, which gave all the kids hot cider or a little treat of popcorn and a hot chocolate. And I was kind of a little bit taken back by the crowd up there. I did not know it was going to be that big. There was a lot of there was a lot of people there. And now with the recreation one rolling out, I think we have another one at Cuss. Um, there's a lot of good events going on. And then, of course, we have, you know, traditional Halloween where people go around door to door. So we're uh, we're keeping the, the, the foot on the uh, foot on the pedal and trying to make an, a, a number of options for people to get involved and have some fun over the holidays here. Yeah. And obviously we all want everyone to remain safe if they're going tricky treating in, in the neighborhoods. Uh, please, make sure that please, you're safe. Agree. Yeah. We don't, we don't need any, uh, any incidents from uh, Halloween. All right, Mayor Paul Coogan, as always, thank you for your time. We'll talk next week. Take care. Okay. Thank you, Keith. All right. And thank you for joining us as always here in FRC media. I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great week.